All right, hello my friends, and welcome back to another Brotato class guide. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're covering the Explorer. I want to shout out PVZ Gaming and Bogren, who requested the Explorer just about two weeks ago. Sorry it took so long to get to this one. I've got quite a backlog of guides going, but if there's a class that you want to see, do let me know, and I will add it on to the list. All right, so the Explorer gets to do my very favorite thing in this game, run around killing trees. You get more tree spawns, and this text line of text doesn't tell you what this means, but what it actually means is you get more trees as though you had 12 tree items in your inventory. So that's an enormous bonus, that's one of the best items in the game just when you have one of them, and this character gets to start with 12 of them. You also start with a lumberjack shirt, so you can one-shot trees, which is really nice, and 10% speed, so you can get from tree to tree faster. You also gain extra pickup range, which is really good because you'll be generating a lot of consumables on the ground. On the other hand, you have much further to go. The map is larger, and there's more enemies, which would normally be a pretty huge advantage, but on this character you get minus 50% materials dropped from enemies, so the more enemies is much less of an advantage than it is for other characters. In fact, because we have 125% enemies on the field and they're worth half as much, our income from enemies is effectively 62.5% that of a normal character, so we need to make up the difference by breaking trees. Enemies also have plus 10% speed, which you might think sort of cancels out our 10% speed, but it's actually a significant disadvantage for us because if everything's moving faster, then we as the human player have to react to those things more quickly and move more precisely. You would much rather that both you and the enemies take a move speed penalty than both you and the enemies have a move speed increase. You also get 40% damage reduction, which is a pretty significant reduction, especially in the early game, so one that we're going to look to mitigate as quickly as we can. Another hidden disadvantage of this character is that this weapon selection is terrible. This is a laundry list of some of the worst weapons in the game just all laid out here. So the weapon that we are going to choose is the sort of only good weapon in this list, the stick. I think there's a couple other weapons you can do. There's some cool stuff you can do if you go screwdrivers and then find pocket factory early. You can do an engineering build because you're generating so many trees. Um, Cactus Club is worth mentioning because the projectiles can break trees for you, and that's kind of cool. But the stick is just going to carry us through the early game with its huge flat damage, and the primitive weapon tag is really solid, so I think this is the best choice for the Explorer. I will say, I'm not overall an enormous fan of this character's design, because I think that it ends up being extremely reliant on finding just a couple very specific items, and... While you certainly can win without them, the game gets so much easier with those if you do find those items that I think this character ends up being less fun than it could be otherwise because you spend so much time rolling for them. We do get two crates though, so that's really nice. And we will take plant. We're going to use HP regeneration over lifesteal as our regeneration source in addition, of course, to consumable healing. And melee damage and crit chance is great because we're a melee build. Here I am going to throw in one reroll. We're looking for harvesting if we can get it. Uh, we didn't get harvesting, but luck is also really good on this character. Of course, as you saw, we're making so many trees that we we're breaking so many trees that we will be generating crates from the trees at a significant rate if we have any luck. Let's grab a stick and keep rolling. Grab a stick. Ugly tooth is pretty good on this character, but. In the early game, we only want to buy sticks and hard roll for one specific item, and that item is bag. As you saw, we're generating so many crates that we just need to find bags. Um, we'll take fertilizer and stick, though, of course, because they're they're really solid to get early anyways, or fertilizer's really solid to get early anyways. But bag will by itself if we get one relatively early, solve all the economy issues of this character. Since we're generating two or three crates per round, the bag is going to make up all of the difference. So if we'd found one in that early wave, we would have generated 15 already. Incredibly powerful, and a problem that I kind of have with this character is just that you... Oh, I wish I'd been able to break that. Um, is just that you end up hard rolling for bag a lot. To that end, even though Scared Sausage has some synergy with this character if we end up with a Pocket Factory later, I'm going to recycle it, actually, because we just want more money to try to find bags. 
And here I'm going to roll again. We're again just looking for harvesting to get that going. Since we're going to be buying fertilizer as well, especially. So let me roll again. Nothing here. Roll again. I'll lock the stick. And I'm going to throw in one more re-roll to see if we can find a bag. We didn't. It's not unwinnable if we don't, but our run will be so much smoother if we do that I think you should really invest a lot of shop rolls into searching for bags, especially in the first five or seven shops or so. Running around just looking for trees. Definitely taking this, and here, this percent damage is going to be really good. Because our percent damage is our lowest stat by sort of necessity, any increase to percent damage has a, a higher increase for our overall DPS output than any other stat that we could raise. I'll grab some luck here so we can generate more crates, and we found it. So this run just got a lot easier, because we're going to be generating 30 to or so materials per bag every single run and that will fix out every single wave and that will fix our economy back to sort of the point neutral point of a normal character pretty much all by itself you'll see what i mean as we go um here i am actually going to once again just roll we're looking for another bag if we can get it this character has a shop bias that includes bag also i should mention that so i'm not just crazily re-rolling for this we are more likely to find it than other characters on the other hand here i'm just going to lock the pocket factory because that's such a powerful item on this character um, since we're generating so many trees the pocket factory will allow us to generate tons of turrets and we have the lumberjack shirt half of the combo already so those turrets will break more trees for us that in turn will generate more crates because of our high luck, and those crates will generate money because of bags. So that's kind of the core of this character's economy and your plan for getting it rolling. I also happened to notice that we had hordes as our first two um, on 12 and I think 14. That's probably easier than elites for this run. So if you're really struggling with this character, definitely consider rolling away elites until you get hordes. Since we're going with stick, that should one-shot the horde enemies, and hordes shouldn't be a real problem for this character. 6% speed is good. We definitely want to increase our speed on this character, especially because the map is so large. And I'll grab the pocket factory, grab the stick, lock the beanie, and throw in a reroll. We are looking for anything that is going to help us with our economy or with our percent damage. Black belt is pretty interesting here. So luck is a really important stat for this character, but the bonus XP gain this early is not bad. I think I'm gonna pass on it and not lock it, but it's something that that's worth talking about at least. So now you can see we've got our turrets starting to stack up. Those are going to be killing monsters for us. We can more or less avoid the monsters for most of the run. Like, we'll, we'll kill them, but we're not trying to chase them down and farm them uh, the way that most other characters are. This character is much more intent on running around breaking trees. That's 15 from the bag already. This wave... Let's see if any of these have them. There's also, uh, the way that trees spawn is kind of weird for this character. So they're going to spawn in waves, and a certain number of them will always spawn right at the start of the wave clustered around you. So it's kind of worth keeping in mind that you're going to have a cluster of trees right at the beginning. Definitely taking luck there, and metal, of course, one of the most efficient items in the game. I'll take this metal detector as well, even though we're picking up fewer materials plus luck is really good. Engineering is now quite good because we have the pocket factory um, and all of that is really solid. So here I'm just going to grab the level two speed. I wouldn't mind the HP regeneration either, but now that we have plus 24 speed, we should be in much better shape. You have to have more speed relative to the enemy's speed on this character to have sort of the same relative ability to evade as another character would um i in other words you need to have in order to have the same sort of relative ability to dodge that you would have with 110 percent speed say on another character you need something like 125 percent speed on this character because it's proportional to the enemy speed 
I'm going to just roll past the whetstone. Always a great item, but we're just planning to go for HP regen. And Ugly Tooth, I think we are planning to just one-shot things. Um... Oh, no, that was a mistake. Because we have the Pocket Factory already, I should have picked up the Ugly Tooth, but that's okay. And then I'm going to lock this injection because the percent damage is still really important to us. Do I want to lock the Claw Tree? I think we can do better than that. I'm just going to go to the next wave. So I definitely should have picked up the Ugly Tooth there, but... We didn't. But as you can see... That's 30 more income from the bag. We got 45 last round, so you can see why I was emphasizing so strongly that this character is just about finding bag, um, which I, I think is a design choice I don't actually like that much for this character. I think that Brotato shouldn't come down to rolling really hard for a single specific item. Um, So if, if the devs are listening and we're looking for characters to rework, I think this is one that could use a little bit of adjustment just to make that a less prevalent and important strategy. Recycling machine is great. We're going to be finding so many crates that we will have a lot of stuff we can recycle. And in fact, we can immediately recycle this campfire for 42. I might select it if we hadn't just found the recycling machine, but for 42, it's really nice. Spicy sauce is kind of fun for this guy because... We are going to be picking up so many consumables. Um, and of course, it's also just three max HP for no downside. So you'll usually just pick it anyways. Here, I'll just take 8% damage. Crit chance would also be good, but damage is going to be better for us right now. And I'll take 15 luck. Definitely going to be upgrading this stick. Consumable healing, critically important for this character. So I'm glad we found some. And gentle alien... So these are, of course, worse for this character and all the others with the economy penalty, the minus 50% materials drop from enemies penalty, um, than they are for other characters, but they're still just a really efficient item. 2 HP and 5 damage is just, just really good. So gentle aliens worth picking up, even if you don't benefit as much from the additional enemy spawns. Let's take uh, alien tongue as well, because I get a free reroll, and it's pretty good for this character. And then scared sausage is now more interesting because we already have the pocket factory so this will allow us to apply fire all across the map if i build any elemental damage that becomes very strong or if we find strange book to build into elemental damage i'm gonna speculate on locking this scared sausage and we probably won't work worry too hard about building elemental damage but i think that's a powerful enough option to have at our disposal that i'm gonna speculatively pick that up next wave especially because we found a bag so our economy is in okay shape you often want to break the eggs on the characters that have the 50 percent economy reduction because the big guys take a long time to kill and how the 50 percent reduction works is it just gives them a 50 percent chance of spawning materials so sometimes you're going to take a lot put a lot of effort into killing one of these really big guys um, and then it's just not going to drop any materials at all. Not seeing any of these, uh, explosions, even as I'm picking... There we go. Saw a couple explosions. Peacock, we're definitely not taking. Cute monkey, though, of course I'll take. We will be picking up some materials as we go. And then here, this would get my harvesting over 20. Attack speed is also something I'm really lacking in right now, though. I think at this point, I'd better just take the attack speed. We're getting late enough in the round that harvesting is not going to be a massive part of our um, economic setup. So I'm going to just take the attack speed and make sure that we can keep killing stuff. Take these. Do I want the fuel tank? Minus one melee damage is definitely painful when we're a melee build, but... We, that would make the burn do, what, three damage? We already have minus one. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about the, the fuel tank here. If we get elemental damage for free, I'll take it, but I'm not going to take it at the cost of other stuff. Continue to upgrade this sticks. Lock the metal and go on to the next wave. It is, of course, really fun doing the elemental engineering build but this character suffers enough in economy that i think you have to be kind of disciplined in what you buy in the shop 
I'm willing to spend 40 on that to potentially have the option to go for it, but I'm not going to really go out of my way to build into elemental damage stuff. Another thing that's worth mentioning on this character, in addition to needing specific weapons or items, I think this is one of the characters that benefits the most from having specific waves have your elites or hordes. Um, in particular, wave 14 is really, really hard for this character because the larger map and more enemies means that the slugs fill the arena with projectiles really quickly. Um, and so having a wave 14 elite, I think, is one of the ways that you can really end up having your character unable to survive. I'm going to take the weird ghost here. We know we're spawning next to trees and we have some consumable healing, so we should be okay to, to survive even at 1 HP. And I'll take the peaceful bee as well. Here I'm going to take just some max HP. That's really nice to grab at this point. And I can take this. Gambling token, yes. I'll take the book as well. It's very cheap and helps a lot with our pocket factory and then here pumpkin would be good if i had a source of pierce already but i don't um pierce obviously for the pocket factory i'm going to just grab the stick and i think pass on the rest of this shop for now uh, i'll lock in the the missile because percent damage is still something we badly need so gonna start at one hp but i can immediately run down here and pick up a few consumables running all over the place because I invested heavily into speed we should be able to find and break trees as they spawn and of course as that happens we are going to have more turrets which will break trees for us also we'd want to find you know any additional turrets landmines and so on one thing that's kind of cool is you end up with these little clusters of turrets, groves, I guess, if you will, as the trees spawn together and then are broken by previous turrets from previous trees. A second bag would really send this character through the roof right now, but even one bag, we're just getting so much money every wave. Coupon is great, of course, and when it's f most, more or less free, I'll probably just take the whetstone. 4% lifesteal isn't amazing, but it's good. And even with the recycling machine, I think it's worth speculating on some marginal things. Um, I'll take the glasses here as well for the same reason. That can get our range back up towards zero. And the baby elephant actually will be pretty good for this character. We are now generating quite a bit of materials on the ground, and we intend to build our luck up even further. So even with the damage penalty, we can still use that. Take some attack speed here, and let's reroll this one. I'm going to grab just max HP. Here, I'll buy most of this shop. Dangerous Bunny, less good for this character in general, just because we have less money, so we'll be rerolling less, but I think still worth it here. I'm going to reroll, and I can now maybe build my lifesteal up to... I could get it to 9%. I think that's not worth investing a bunch of money into. If it sort of happens on its own, I'll do it. But if not, then I won't. Um, Obliterator. Probably not worth picking up. It's 228 damage. And we're not building any ranged damage. So yeah, I'm not going to do that. It would also, of course, ruin our stick synergy. So always worth looking at this weapon when it shows up, but I think in this case we don't want it. On the other hand, Banner is going to be pretty good, um, even though it reduces our lifesteal. I should have recycled this whetstone. I just, you know, got excited because it's such a good item, but um, it's better to, to have recycled it there, I think. And Acid. My dodge is okay. Um, so I could consider trying to build that up, but I think we do still just want to increase my max HP. And community support is an item that is really excellent for this character because we have so many additional enemy spawns that the attack speed boost from it is going to be enormous. And because the enemies are scattered across a wide area, they are much less likely to be all dead at the same time. So you're always going to have community support producing a ton of effect. 
Um, so when the wave begins, you get four trees spawning with at least two of them in a cluster around you, and that's unique to this character. Uh, there, this character has like a lot of hidden text. Um, so you want, you want to run around until you've broken four trees, because you, you will always have a minimum of four trees. Somewhere on the map, but they do like to hide in corners. Now we've got a pretty efficient network of turrets here, and they're all hitting for 15, which is not incredible, but certainly not bad. I'm gonna take this metal again. I guess we're not getting crit chance. Ooh, okay, well, that's what we want. So the first bag has been worth 270 materials already. Just keep that in mind. Um, mushroom is really good. We're gonna build our regeneration up, which I definitely want to get before we have to fight elites and horde waves. Our luck is already pretty solid and our percent damage is still quite low, so I'm going to take that and then here regeneration is what we want. Ha getting my regeneration to 10 means it's now a really significant factor in addition to our consumable healing and so that should hopefully keep us alive. Grab the acid, grab community support. Landmines is also just worth buying I think on this character because it will break the- we're building a decent amount of engineering and also it'll break trees for us. And I do desperately need to raise my armor, so I'm going to roll for stuff that does that. Power Fist, kind of cool, but again, we just want to maintain our stick synergy. And I, I'm just rolling for things that provide armor at this point, because it's so important that I get that. I'm going to actually take the metal over the power generator, even though power generator is a lot of damage right now. Um, but just I want to make sure that I don't just get one shot at some point in this wave. With 88 max HP, that's not a huge threat, but at this point our build has already come online pretty well, thanks to our early find of a bag, and so my main concern is making sure that I don't die in stupid ways. Definitely going to need to increase my damage, though, before we fight an elite. For a horde, this should be okay. When you have a horde wave as your first boss wave, you don't need to focus on damage as much as when you have an elite, but... By the time we get to the later elites, this will be really important. Got that loot alien as well, which is another 30 gold from our bags, or uh, 30 materials. Been playing too much Baldur's Gate. If you haven't checked out my Baldur's Gate Iron Man playthrough, um, it, I just put up a very spicy episode probably yesterday when you see this, so go check that out. I am really enjoying it. I am going to pick up some more percent damage here, and we've actually built a lot of max HP, so Alienize is going to be pretty good here. It can also break trees for us. That's an item that I think is particularly interesting for this character. I'm going to take 9% speed here because we know we have a uh, power generator locked in the shop, and so that's going to also be 9% damage, and we will be very zippy and hurt real bad. Um, Negative armor for 10% crit chance. We're never getting our crit chance to positive. I've taken three medals already, four medals already. So crit chance is just not going to happen this run, and that's okay. On the other hand, do I want fertilizer or little frog? I think I'm going to pass on both of those. I think the things that I need more than anything else at this point is just armor and defensive stats. Um, and then we'll get our damage up afterwards. I'll still take the crown, though, and now kind of wishing I'd bought those two harvesting items, because that will passively increase our harvesting. And I'll, I'll take the blindfold here as well. Um, getting my dodge up a little higher will be good. Let's also lock this, because more max HP is great. Going to be a lot of enemies on the field this wave, so... Prepare yourself. Hopefully my game doesn't lag or anything. <laughs> A little bit more in the way of consumable healing would be huge for us right now. With only five, we're less likely to be able to burst heal ourselves back to full. And uh, tank a lot of enemies there to get the, the chain of turrets going in the middle. And also because I have the spicy sauce, when I dive into a pack of and decent luck, when I dive into a pack of enemies, there's a very good chance that I spawn some consumables and those consumables explode, clearing the pack of enemies very quickly. So you you can use that to set off chain reaction. 
didn't happen there. I was I was hoping to demonstrate that, but we managed to get that to not explode. On the other hand, this is already 90 materials just from those chests, as well as the items inside them, of course. We'll take the pickup range and more pickup range, sure. And wings is great. Um, and max HP is great. Really just looking for armor at this point. That's our uh, armor and dodge are our defensive stats that we need. And of course, more damage is good as well. Roll again. And sad tomato would... Yeah, we, we heal back up to full basically right away every round. So sad tomato is going to be pretty good here. And we do want to increase our HP regeneration. I'll take the beanie as well because it's 4% damage and 4% speed. And then strange book... Doesn't do anything right now, in fact, is a penalty, but does mean that any elemental damage we buy also increases our engineering. At this point, I think we are in kind of luxury mode on this character, and so we can do some fun stuff with Strange Book. So I'm going to lock that. And we can add in some elemental burning effects to our build as well, as well as increasing our engineering. Next wave is the real test of this build, by the way. Even though it's not a an elite, it's not a boss or anything, wave 14 is by far the hardest wave for this character. Um, and you will see why when we get into it. And again, uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, but if you are having, tr if you're struggling with this character, one of the best pieces of advice I can give you is just roll it to make sure that you don't have a wave 14 boss, because that's very likely what's killing you. Um, which again, I I hate to complain this much, but I do think that that's not great design for this character to have it be so dependent on certain RNG aspects. I'm actually going to take this crit chance. We can get it above zero soon. And yeah, 24 HP regeneration. Now our regeneration is really good. Let's recycle the lens here, and I'm just going to take 12% damage. And then buy this whole shop, as we already planned to buy the strange book, and everything else here is really nice. Let's also keep on rolling, and I will grab this leather vest. Even two armor is a huge boost to our survivability. And then we can take the stick and the blindfold, and that will help a lot with this next wave where we are very likely to take a lot of attacks. So let's get into it and I will show you what I mean. So as we kill these guys, the little guys spawn and the little guys are zippy because they, they have the speed boost. And as they stack up, they're going to fill the entire arena with these projectiles. So by the end of the wave, we are going to have a lot of trouble dodging all of the projectiles. This is especially pronounced when you have Pocket Factory, which I think is still good on this character, but does make this wave in particular harder because you can't control when you're killing the slugs since your Pocket Factory turrets are going to do it for you. So see how many um, projectiles are already up. And as more and more enemies spawn, our movement gets more and more constrained. Our regen is really good, so we should be okay. But even with this very good version of the build, this wave in particular is really, really dangerous. And you can see why as, as the bullet hell commences in the late game. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to recycle Triangle of Power. With the additional enemies on the map, you are never going to be able to not tank hits. I will take Stone Skin, though. Even though our armor isn't great, it's just nice to have those effects. And Cyclops Worm, yep. And then I will take, pick this up. Now we have a little positive crit chance, I guess. So I lied when I said we, that would never happen. Let's grab this, grab this. Uh, I'm still looking for more armor. Finn, also just good to have. And I can take... Um, boiling water and that gives us engineering and elemental damage so our, we're still just taking a penalty from the strange book and that might be true the entire game but i think it was it's fun and worth speculating on this is a horde wave but also does have the slugs there's just less of the slugs in wave 15 than in wave 14 so it's not as dangerous as wave 14 But that's the enemy type that is going to give you the most trouble in this uh, 
on this character. That extra lemonade also coming in handy. I'm just gonna run in there and see if I can trigger some explosions, clear out some enemies with our spicy sauce. Yep. <laughs> Managed to blow up a bunch of them there. Took a lot of damage there, but as you can see, there's so many fewer projectiles and, and projectiles are the real threat to your character usually that we are able to kind of farm with impunity this wave. And finding fairy and everything helped a lot as well. Grab that, grab this. Uh, definitely, definitely not this. Never take that item, but especially not on this character. Elemental damage would be nice, but I think I'm still just going to take dodge here um, when it's a choice between the two, because getting our dodge to cap would be ideal. Let me grab this blindfold and this fin and roll. And we actually have a bunch of explosion effects, so I'm going to take the dynamite. Roll again here. Improved tools is really good. We have good attack speed and we're generating a ton of turrets, so I'll grab that. Pumpkin, I'm still going to keep passing on until we have some form of um, piercing effect. And also, I've been passing these wheelbarrows, which, let me tell you, does does fill me with pain. But uh, I think it's important that we stay disciplined on this character, even though it's going quite well. And I just need armor at this point is what I'm rolling for the most. Um, lock the stick. I will still take the fertilizer though. And heavy bullets gives us range damage, damage, and range for attack speed and crit chance. I don't think that's worth it um, since we don't use the range damage at all. Whoop. I actually took a lot of damage there and uh, got quite low because I was at half health to start with. Running around killing trees, but also trying to make sure I chase down the, the brain bugs every once in a while. This is another wave that can be kind of tough, because if enough of those guys stack up, you can end up facing enormous amounts of buffed enemies all at once. And the buffed enemies gain move speed and damage, so if they tag you, you can die really quickly. And they also gain health, which makes it much more likely that they're going to get to you. Even with the very high damage of our stick build, the buffed enemies can be really dangerous. I'll say this explorer build I think has come together better than most. Um, you don't need one that comes together this well, but you do, I think, more or less need to find a bag. Otherwise, it's going to be a lot harder to win with this character. Not impossible, but much harder. I'm going to roll here. We're just looking for armor, but I guess I'll take max HP. Um, take this stick and roll again. All right, this is our very first tree, which we are more likely to find, but haven't so far. And then I'm going to buy out this shop. Keep on rolling. I'll take the tentacle as well. Crit chance is now starting to be kind of decent and another way to heal never goes amiss. We'll have like a lot of healing on this character, as you can see. And then I'm going to break a couple of these trees as soon as I can so I can try to find this elite. I was wondering where it went, but it makes sense because it's this one that just moves slowly towards you. Um, when you have good... kind of good damage for the small enemies and decent defensive stats, as well as alien eyes, what you want to do is stand like basically in the elite every time your alien eyes triggers because then every one of the shots is going to hit the, the elite and that will deal a ton of damage to it. I'm backing off real quick just because there were so many of the ribcage guys and they'd all received buffs that I was losing a lot of health. And because we have no armor, this character, even with its very high health pool and high regeneration, can still die quite quickly. So any armor we find will increase our survivability massively. Run back here and get that tree. Oh, there's a loot alien, I missed him. Oh well. Uh, dodge, still really good, and recycle this, and recycle this, and I'll take this, take this. I was still hoping for armor. I'm going to reroll because we're guaranteed level 3 options from this level up, so I'm just going to reroll until we find some armor. 
All right. <laughs> Maybe I lied. I'm going to take melee damage here, but that was uh, pretty unlucky, but wait, what can you do? All right. Going to combine this and grab a stick, and then I'm going to roll past any more damage here, and I'm still just looking for armor, so I'll take this tentacle, but I really need to keep rolling looking for, you guessed it, more armor. <laughs> Concerned that the bosses are going to be able to kill me really quickly, and that because I have such high move speed, it's actually in some ways harder to dodge, just because I have to react faster to like change direction. It would be kind of sad to make it all the way to the bosses and then die to them just because I went into it with zero armor, especially because that's so unlikely and so avoidable. We really have not gotten lucky on finding armor in shops or in level ups. We did get a lot of medals, but I did also spend a lot of that armor, so I should say some of this is me just not paying attention to or not taking seriously the threat of spending down all my armor by buying other stuff. this and metal detector at this point is not going to have any effect I'll take this i will recycle this we'll take this hey one armor you know <laughs> better than nothing oh thank goodness all right well well we found a chest upgrade and that's really all we needed four armor is still just plenty to make sure we don't get one shot and all i'm really worried about is just taking a couple hits in a row and just just getting completely flattened um so even just a little bit of armor is good enough to save us here. I'll take this and our elemental damage and engineering can be positive for the end of the round. And Cyberball is also really good because we spawned so many more enemies. Lure, still good. Um, alien magic, still good. And let's go to wave 19. Oh, there was a, a loot alien up there. I saw his little green hat. Well, the loot alien spawned really early in this wave from the lure. Or, no, I, I got two lures, so there were, there's four of them spawning. What luxury. I am just going to focus on clearing this pod of enemies. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I took a ton of damage all at once because uh, all of those enemies that I got hit by were buffed. And four armor is, is a lot better than zero, but still not a lot. So I can't, I can't afford to just charge into enemies with complete impunity. I'm going to take the Tyler here. Now, I'm just going to recycle this. This engineering sub-theme has been fun, but hasn't worked out as a major part of our build, so I think more 100 is going to be more important just to try to find some armor um, before the end of the, the level rather than try to spend that on doing cute things with engineering or elemental damage. I'm going to reroll this and... Yeah, I'll just keep taking percent damage. Our percent damage is actually really high now, because um, I've been taking it sort of on autopilot, but actually it's now my, my highest stat by far, and other things would matter more. We get a uh, redemption and get to take this ugly tooth, and then I will, sure, I'll do this. Uh, I'm actually going to pass on the alien magic, because I think the only thing that really matters for our character build at this point is additional armor, so... I'm just going to roll past anything that doesn't give us armor. Octopus is tempting my resolve there, but it would also reduce my crit chance a lot. And I'll take this this uh, level 2 stick, but I'm not going to go for the level 4 stick. Still not finding anything. Still nothing. All these rerolls for nothing. <laughs> The game does not want to give me armor. My gosh. 
Okay, all right, two armor right at the end. <laughs> okay. Well, even the, the six armor should be enough, but I think that one, one principle that I want to, you know, kind of mention always in these videos is that you really need to look at what your build needs in specific rather than just blindly following a tier list of items or anything like that. Although, of course, you should check out my tier list of items. Um, and so in, in that case, you know, spending a thousand material on two armor, I think, was a better spend of that thousand material than anything else we could have spent it on. We have enough damage that we can kill the bosses before the end of the wave. All we need to do is not just die to getting randomly hit a few times. Alright, well, thank you for watching, my friends. That is The Explorer. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, if you have, you can feel free to leave a like, leave a comment. I read every read and reply currently to every comment, although since the channel's been growing so much, I don't know how long I'll be able to keep up replying to every comment, but for now, that's the plan. Um, and it really helps the channel grow when people like the video, reply to, or leave comments, or subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. I should also probably mention that you can now give me money if you want, um, although again, don't feel any pressure to do so. And as always, my friends, hope you've enjoyed this look at the Explorer. Cheers, folks. I'll catch you next time.